Hi everybody, this is going to be a Airbus A319 Autoland and I'm just going to talk you through what's on the screen at the moment. So the PFD is showing at the top that the auto throttle is doing the speed. I've set that to 135. Um, the aircraft is in altitude hold mode at the moment and I've asked it to fly on a particular heading. Although there is a route available uh, the last stage I've decided to go on a heading. So you'll notice on the navigational display that there is a green dotted route, uh, but because I'm not asking the aircraft to follow it, it's not solid green. The solid green line above the aircraft is the track line. Okay, so currently we're flying on a heading of uh, 140, um, but our track is slightly to the right because of the wind. You can see the wind is uh, eight knots, uh, from a heading of 001 magnetic. Bottom left on the PFD, the ILS information. So I've tuned in the ILS already, and you can see it's tuned into 110.15 for Bristol, and we're coming in on runway 09, uh, heading east. Uh, the um, heading in the RNAV, uh, radio nav section of the MUPDU is 088 degrees. And uh, so if I switch over to the um, ILS mode on the ND. Okay, so I've switched over to ILS mode and you can see that the um, course has been set correctly on the ND. The uh, little bar there tells me that's the you know, heading towards the runway or that's the course I've selected. And it looks like the localizer beam is sort of in front of me. As I turn left towards the airport, it'll be on my right, which makes sense. I'm approaching from the north, roughly. The uh, LS button's been pressed, so the localizer and the glide slope bugs are active. Otherwise, that wouldn't be showing. Uh, it's one of those things on Airbus that you have to do that. So this button here has to be pressed, otherwise you won't see that information. And you can see top right on the... Uh, PFD that the autopilot one is in that number one and number two flight directors are active that the auto throttle is in as well and this is my radio altitude height uh, decision height which I've entered into the system so what I need to do now is I need to go to the FCU the flight control unit panel and I need to press the approach button which I will do and I will press the, the second autopilot button now. When we come back to this screen, I'll pause it again. Now you can see on the PFD top right that autopilots one and two are selected, that we're in cat three dual land mode, effectively. My decision height is still there. And you'll notice the boxes because these things have just become active. So it looks like I'm gonna get a cat three dual land mode I've got both autoparts selected, which is what I need to do. And you'll also notice that now Glide Slope and Localizer are armed. Uh, on the Airbus there, light blue, underneath the active modes of Alt and Heading. So if I unpause this now, I've already set the aircraft up for landing, so gear and flaps are already done. If I unpause this, what we should see is we should see the aircraft approach the localizer and then capture it. So I'm unpausing and what should happen is the localizer bar just here will start to move in towards the center and with Airbus um, it has a sort of pre-capture mode so it'll move up the top and it will become localizer star and then once we're properly established on the localizer the star part will disappear. So we're just waiting for that to happen now. And you can see localizer star has become active and we are turning left onto the localizer. And you can see down the bottom of the PFD that the localizer bug has moved in towards the middle. So once we are on the localizer, then the bug will stay in the middle on the yellow line. And we're still turning left slightly because we're now rolling out right to correctly stay on the localizer. So allowing for wind as well, 
the autopilot will keep us on the localizer. So what we're waiting for now is the glide slope. And as you can see, the glide slope bug is coming down. So we're flying into the glide slope. 2,500. And as soon as we get close enough, the uh, system will automatically capture the glide slope. So we're expecting to see glide slope here move up to the top. Should happen shortly. There we go. Again, glide slope star, and now glide slope without the star as we are on the glide slope. And you can probably hear the engines winding down slightly as the aircraft descends towards the runway. So everything looks like it's okay. Um, no mention of land yet, but that won't happen um, for a little while. We know that it's going to happen. We've got our Cat 3 Jewel, but we're waiting for that to finally kick in um, as we approach the runway. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can have a look and see what's going on outside. And there you can see the runway directly in front of us. And as we get closer, we're going to see the pappies, the red and white lights on the left, showing that we are correctly on the glide slope, which is three degrees at this airport. That's a standard approach angle. And I can see it 400 feet land has become enunciated. 200. And remember, this is an Airbus, so the throttles 100. will not retard automatically. We will have to do that. 100. It's going to select maximum auto brakes. Minimum 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard, 5. Right, so I've retarded the throttles. We're on rollout mode, so I'm going to hit maximum reverse. Auto brakes are on. And now I'm killing the reverse, and the aircraft has stopped. So that was an auto land with a flare and rollout mode on the A319 Airbus. Thank you.